Well, from anyone's point of view, it's obviously looking after our planet. And even if people kind of tend to say, well, sure, everyone's saying this. If we don't look after it, we'll end up, you know, leaving in a, in a dump. Literally, there'll be waste all over the place. The, the air pollution will just aggravate. And already there are countries around the planet showing that this will happen soon, okay? Countries like China and a few others around the globe have proved that this will end up being a, a very polluted planet. Europe is for now, you know, okay, but that doesn't mean it won't happen here. So if we don't take action in recycling and few other more important things, we will end up living in a, in a very polluted Few, yeah, few of the machines. So first, few of the well, the most important machine that we have here, and it starts the process. It's our shovel. So the, our shovel literally pushes all our uh, material into the the uh, processing uh, mechanical, you know, uh, aids. So one of the first ones is our screens, which segregates all of the cardboard from the rest of the material. Then the next one would be a um, few other sets of screens that will take out everything that is contaminated off our paper and then everything that falls down it like finds 3ds and everything like that that it's kind of bulky will go into a separate conveyors and separate lines uh, processing lines and then we will take out everything that's metal then the other current will take everything that is the um, aluminium cans then the the uh, perforator will make holes and make sure that the material is flat all right, and then few other uh, machines that we call Aladdin in Cascade, they will segregate all the plastics for uh, true color or um, like for example, if it's if it's cleared PET, it'll go in one part in one conveyor. If it's um, uh, HDP or if it's uh, colored PET, it will all go into separate. A conveyors and then it'll make separate products because we sell them separately okay so this is obviously a, a commodity and the market requires it that way as I said the plastic goes to different uh, companies we at the moment send it to Shabba Plastics and they are flaking it down into small pieces and cleaning it and it kind of it, it's, it's looking very close to virgin plastic okay so that's what we do obviously we have machines that uh, compresses all of this material into uh, half a ton bale then half a ton bale uh, are uh, loaded into trailers and being sent all over the world basically um, in, in different outlets Uh, well, it depends now. It depends what kind of material we process. But basically, from one end to another, it could be roughly about two hours. We only collect dry mix recyclables. So this plant only allows dry mix recyclables from domestic customers to come through their gate. Anything that is, for example, general waste, compost, anything else would go to different facilities and we have one across the street that would take general waste C and I and C D that's that small skips from constructions or when you're getting skips at home, right? And then the compost would go there as well and that's that's literally processed differently. This is a purely dry mix recyclable plant from green bins that come from only domestic customers, as in our own households, not from buy material from us are literally a um, couple of them in Ireland and a few of them in the UK. Now they buy material from us, they organise transport, they take material from here and they take it and they sell it into different plants. This is a good question. Now people tend not to kind of care about a product being, being fully recyclable or not. From our point of view, to be fairly completely honest, and you might not even put this in your video, right? Um, if a bin comes in here with, say, for example, PT, which is, uh, sorry, um, cardboard, kind of like the, the milk jug, right? The milk, um, what you call it? The one layer milk jug. Hmm? The one layer milk jug. Yes, yeah. yeah the, the, the tetra pack. The tetra pack, right? Now, tetra packs are not fully recyclable. Everyone knows this, right? It's made of cardboard and a right. layer, a thin layer of uh, wax of yeah. some sort, right? 
that's not recyclable. Really? But, no. Yeah, sorry, I, 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 I believe you. P, uh, this goes over to a mill in China or a mill all over the, mm. like anywhere in the world, and is being mixed with different chemicals that will make the carbon melt, okay, and go forward down the process, and that wax or, or small film or whatever it is, it's contaminant. It will just flow there. Now, that's not fully recyclable, but we don't really mind, okay? Yeah. That's okay-ish. But when a, a bag with nappies comes in here with the paper and contaminates, contaminates all the paper and the plastic, that's our biggest problem, right? It's not so much you're being fully uh, recyclable or not. Or for example, you know those black trays from, like, say, fruits or whatever? Yeah, those are not, not really... Um, Recyclable, and even worse, our machines don't really get them because everything that's black, like black bags, the machines do not cut them because the bells are black as well. So they, they're not. We don't. We can't really. That's the only material we can't fully recover. But again, we don't really mind because worst case scenario, it will end up in being burned into the SRF um, plant. Sorry, being processed into the SRF plant, and. Uh, being burnt into cement kilns, which again is not the worst thing, but when f contaminants like dead animals and nappies and bags with like I don't know takeaway food in bags, that's our problem. That's our problem. Or like aerosols, people tend to put everything like batteries, light bulbs, um, everything that is you know it definitely shouldn't be. It, it can't be recycled. You can't really imagine that if you put a battery in your bin, it will be recycled in a DMR plant. It won't, because we only accept paper, and that's right. why there's so many, and Repack does a good inform, um, informing campaign uh, these days into what to put in your in your green bin. That's there for a reason, and even if, obviously, people, some of, some of our, you know, just neighbours say, okay, not us, neighbours, uh, put stuff into the bin believing that okay it'll be cheaper. Uh, fair enough it will be but you will end up paying because you're paying for your green bin, you're paying for it's I think one euro or I think Thornton's take one euro and a few other companies take small charges. Your black bin is in around 15 euros. Now don't be fooled because it doesn't cost us 15 euros to take it but because you're contaminating the green, the green bin that's why you're paying 15 on your black bin, even if you should probably maybe pay like seven or even less. But because this is so contaminated, it ends up impacting the other costs. And that's why we're paying for compost as well. Because all the companies, not only Panda, everyone thinks broadly, okay, all together, three bins for a customer has, say, the cost of, I don't know, 20 euros per month. It doesn't matter what, what exactly you're doing, but because of the, the government and the planet wants us to recycle, we tell the customer, okay, your green bin is for free. Well, it's not. It's really not, because you're paying a lot for your, your black bin. So that's, it's very hard to get a campaign out there or to do something to force recycling. It's very hard. And I think in Ireland, a lot of strategies were tried, and it, it doesn't yeah, work fully, it. no. No. And it's still even recycling list isn't working. It's not working per like as it should yet. But I think I think just progress will make this better. And just people know More information. That. From my point of view it's all about information and it's not enough yet. It's not enough to make everyone hear it. Line B, which is just driving us for several material all over the place. And line C would get contaminants and carbon. Now the screens that take out carbon of the rest of the, the material would literally, it, they're big, big claws, big claws, right? And everything kind of like big chunky material would stay on top. For example, if we have uh, like this one here, say this is carbon, right? Because it's so bulky and so big, right? It will literally float on top of the screens. Same happens with the carbon boxes, carbon or anything, right? So most of that would literally float on top of the screens, but in that will probably be a little film, um, anything that's kind of big and bulky, even a, a, a metal plate would go in. Now, the people in the free source would know, would see and know what to take out, and only pure cardboard will uh, remain after that. 
that's being baled and that's the end of it. So the cardboard is the only one with a short process to save per se, right? That's what happens on line C. Line A and line B remains with all the material minus. I don't think so, depending on from, because I don't really get your point of view. Uh, what do you mean? As in, like, to process it or? No, like the machines, do they use electricity? Oh, yeah, a lot of it. A lot of it. But if you think about it, right, landfill fees are upped by the government for a reason. So, for example, back in the days, now I don't work in that department, so I wouldn't know exact prices, but back in the day when I, I used to work there, uh, it was 120 euros per tonne of waste to put it in the landfill. The reason why, and I, I do honestly believe now it's more than that, okay? Um, the reason why the tax, the landfill tax is so high is for people to recycle, right? Now, they, a lot of material would come in here and a lot of energy would uh, be used to process all that. But it does make sense, 100%, because we are selling this product and we are getting incentive from the repack program, okay? If I'm not mistaken, for the paper, it's five euros per tonne. For each tonne of paper that we produce, we get five euros. Plus, the, the amount of whatever we sell for, so for example, the...